Thanks a lot. Develop the, the, the remote peering style, which is basically a, a, a portal in the remote peering ecosystem. Um, so our goal was to, to detect and localize the remote peering type trees. There are plenty of operational regions that appear to you know be important <coughs> for knowing which peer is remote and which is local. That's been a great paper in this uh, in, in this area, but it doesn't it didn't uh, provide uh, updated data. So we decided to do it ourselves. Uh, the, the, the main methodology is to use uh, the, the huge corpus of Atlas Trace House and calculate the uh, altitude differences between IXP hops and the near end uh, uh, hop uh, between the far end and the near end peer. Obviously, Trace House have a lot of noise, and especially when we you know, subtract altitudes. But the, the fact that Atlas has so many trace outs and so, so many vanish points allows us to, to filter out this noise, to remove our layers. We get basically the median RTT difference over um, pairs uh, of uh, IP and uh, IXPs for which we have at least 50 observations. And uh, here are the results, bit uh, in uh, 10 uh, millisecond uh, delays. As you can see, about 60 to 80 percent of the peelings are local, and uh, the, the ones that are definitely remote are between 10 and 20 percent for the different IXPs that we studied. So we, we studied just uh, five IXPs, but uh, you know, just because it's a hackathon and we don't have too much time, but we plan to, to extend this to, to more IXPs. We validated it against uh, data from three large experts, uh, for which we, we had boxes in, inside the experts, and we have really um, satisfactory results. We, we said that we have a true positive if both our RTPs and the RTPs from inside the experts are over 20 milliseconds. And for, for all the cases that we checked, we asked pretty well accuracy. And then we, we try to see, you know, whether these remote pings are used to, to just to uh, access some small ages that are not available uh, uh, elsewhere or large content. And what we found is that most of the remote peers access large content providers through through these remote peers. So interestingly, for example, uh, some ages in Athens or in Cyprus who are well connected in the local. Uh, peer ecosystem have to go all the way to Amsterdam or, or uh, Frankfurt to, to access Cloudflare or Twitter or Facebook because these CDNs are not in the local ecosystem. So that, that's the point that I made previously. Uh, it, it, it didn't matter just how, how dense is the local ecosystem, but also whether the, the CDN is supported. So some some of the remote peers are, are serial remote peers, are the usual systems. So you see them in every, in every of the IXPs that we studied, they, they were there. And um, it appears that, you know, when they start doing it, it's, it's very simple to do it to many IXPs instead of just some specific ones. So it appears that they don't target the, a specific ecosystem, but they try to, you know, uh, extend their peering reach as far as they can and they do it aggressively. But this has strong implications on the actual uh, multi-homing resilience for this AS. So they may appear that have a lot of peering diversity and resilience, but in reality, they're just remote peering from the same point. That's far away. So also, this work gives some um, insights on how to interpret the facility information in, in peering DB. And uh, we, we checked for how many of the, of the remote peers that we found, um, <laughs> for how many of the remote peers that we found, they record uh, facility presence that is local to the XP. And we have about 16 to 25% of them claiming they have a local presence, which obviously means different things for different you know, operators. They, they, they do it voluntarily and manually. <coughs> 
So either they indicate not exactly physical you know, presence, but the ability to set up connections through this facility, or it's a mistake, or they do it even in purpose to, to, to make it to make themselves more attractive as people and initiate contacts. So maybe that's a point that these automated tools can take into consideration that the data in PMDB may be manipulated in order to appear more attractive. So it may be possible to gain these tools to, 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 to boost their Pinder profile. <laughs> 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 so, you know, that, that's the point that I guess, you know, there is noise that will affect this, this uh, APIs. So now we, we have the question, where are the remote periods? So, so far we solved the problems of whether a period is remote or not. Now, where are they? We used some uh, you know, uh, available relocation techniques that are considered uh, uh, accurate, like open IP map and DNS-based geolocation. But this can geolocate only a subset of the IPs. So for the rest, we either had to, to fall back to some inaccurate you know, techniques like the geolocation database. There are some very you know, high complex techniques like trial iterations, which are, is no readily available implementation, and the hackathon was too short to try to do it. But we, we, we implemented something new, completely new over the Atlas platform, which is the, the, the presence-informed RTP-based geolocation. So what we do, what we say here, what we claim is that if we reduce the problem space of geolocation, we can improve the accuracy without increasing the complexity so, uh, a lot. So the, the key intuition is that a, a target IP that we want to geolocate <coughs> will, will be in, a, in an area where the AES has presence and not just anywhere in the world. So we check pinning the B for, you know, to collect the, the presence of AES in all the possible cities. We take the address probes in these cities that the AES is claimed to have presence, and we run pings, and we, we select a city with the lowest pink if it is the, if the pink is low enough to indicate that it's local, let's say less than five milliseconds. So here's an example. This is an AES that we, we determined to be remote in the gigs. It from pinning the B we found that it has possible presence in 10 cities. We selected five probes from, from each city, and we, we have you know, the pins, we got the RTTs. We implemented this using Custom and the streaming API. And then we, we, we took the minimum RTTs from the problem city, we grouped them, we took the average, and we found that it is in Riga in Latvia. And not in, so you can see here the delays in Germany, which you know, is remote here, are pretty high. So it's, it's obviously remote here, and you know, apparently in, in Latvia, in Riga. Okay, so now we, we developed a, a portal where someone can go and, yeah. So, someone can go and check uh, for, for a given XP the remote peers where they are. And uh, yeah, Petros developed it, so let me give more details. You kind of run out of time, but we'll give you some extra time. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, it will be quick. And, There is a legend uh, which displays the uh, high speed part of the target. And you can select the high speed, like in some BAM sheets. And you can see all the remote peers that are found and geolocate. And for the case study of Athens, we found two remote peers, but also exist on the DKIX high speed. Yeah. It's exactly the same as the systems. And we started an internet same point in the US, in Los Angeles, and we found remote pain from Pacific. Yeah. So the, the, you see the difference in remote pain. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also someone can check the portal if they want to see who is the who is remote ping. Maybe they want to, you know, do the remote ping selection accordingly. It's a, it's a, it's a nice way to, to really conceptualize the global scale of what is supposed to be local. 
um, and you know it's public, and we, we will extend it, you know, beyond this IXP to the entire thing you be said. Thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful. First question, uh, is it real data? So, it's real data, okay. yeah. So, so um, all this data are real. We collected, first of all, the, so the intuition is that if we do, um, if we want to keep an updated uh, data set of remote peers, it's a, a good idea to use the, 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 you know, the corpus of the other trace routes that, you know, are, it's really large, we get continuously more trace routes that tend to cross many XP. There are projects that already um, target XP, so we, we have data. It's a matter of, you know, exploiting them. So we we, we took the data for the past month, and we we parsed and extracted the peers and everything you know. As it is. So it's it's real data. So first of all, I I, I mean this is a great presentation. Um, how do you see this? This, I mean, I, I can see the value for reason my purposes. Um, I'll, I'll use a microphone because I'm very loud. Um, so I, I, can, I can see the value for, for research purposes. How do you envision, so I've got two questions. One of this, how do you envision this is going to help hearing managers? Yeah. Um, so that's question number one. Second question is how can I, as a hearing coordinator or a network manager, um, integrate this extra knowledge into my routing information so I can actually make smarter decisions. Right, right. So it's there, there are, you know, um, first of all, there was a very interesting presentation in Web65, the great remote ping debate, which, you know, answers some of these points that boil down to the fact that Sometimes it may be good, some, some operators may want to avoid remote peers, but there's not enough transparency always to know who is remote and to know where the remote peer is and what is the latency that they experience. So through this portal we provide all this information. You know, we have feedback that some IXPs have developed similar tools for their members that are not public. And, you know, so obviously, you know, this has Direct operational interest for you know since I was uh, already considered this as a way to inform the peering decisions. Also, during the presentation, I, I, I made a few points. First of all, about um, what can we learn for these remote peers, the, the peering information that they provide, uh, whether it is accurate or how it should be interpreted. So I, I think it gives a lot of insights, not just for the remote peer, you know, itself, but also for the the broader presence of an IXP and the information they provide. And since we, we move toward more automated peering coordination, it may be good to take this data with a grain of salt, and it may be good to cross-validate it with some, you know, measurement, uh, actual, you know, measurements from. Uh, Atlas or other other evidence that may not be public necessarily. Thank you. Any more questions? No, thanks. So then we have uh, Barry or all of you.